Welcome to Fort Knox. I am John Fort at the New York Stock Exchange. We are live on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook. Well, we'll see about Facebook uh, and over the top on CNBC.com. We're going to talk about the future and the present of gaming, Fortnite. It's huge. And to start off the conversation, talking about Fortnite, what it means, what else is going on in this exciting area, even as the Game Developer Conference is going on in San Francisco, Russ Frustick, the Polygon co-founder and editor, joins me. Russ, thanks for being with us. Sure thing. Happy to be here. So you guys have been doing uh, great coverage of Fortnite. I've been checking it out. Um, we started covering it as well at CNBC. What is so special? about this game? That, I mean, there have been lots of gaming phenomenon, but I don't know if it's social media amplifying it or what. This is hot. Yeah, it's a, it's a really big deal. I think what makes this game different than a lot of games that have come before is that it's so watchable. It's very easy to watch people playing and understand what exactly is going on. It's this idea of, it's sort of, they call it battle royale, but it's this idea of one versus 100, sure, where someone is constantly getting narrowed down in this big open area can they survive? Will they make it to the final slot? It's like a very intense, like pressure building kind of thing. It's like a Hunger Games kind of thing. And so, what sort of sense do you have? I don't know if you can compare the traffic coming to uh, this game uh, to other games that you guys have covered, but how much heat is there around this game? Yeah, there's a ton. Uh, so the last uh, numbers that I have from the, the maker who shared them was in the middle of February, uh, the concurrent, there was like a total concurrent number of people playing this one game at one time was three and a half million players at once. Uh, oh. They're up around 25 or 30 million uh, registered users. That, that three and a half million at one time is an outrageously high number, uh, especially for something that's so new. It just came out uh, last fall. So it's really a major, major deal. Uh, it's blowing away a lot of the competitors. A lot of that has to do with the fact that it's free. You know, anyone can download it, and it's basically on every platform these days, so it makes a big difference. But mobile is new for this game. I mean, kind of the conventional wisdom had been, hey, mobile is the future for all but the most hardcore of gamers, and the kind of free at first, and then you pay for items thing, that was on mobile. But this didn't start on mobile. What does the growth in Fortnite tell us about, I don't know, where people are really willing to play games? Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of tells you anywhere and everywhere. Uh, people uh, really enjoy the game on PC and on consoles. They're playing on PS4, Xbox. And the impression that people got was, hey, I want to be able to play this on the go. I already have a device that can run it. Can this come here? Now, the big problem is you don't, if you're a, you're a mobile player, you don't want to be playing against a PC player who has a mouse and keyboard and perfect aim <laughs> and you just get crushed. Uh, but here they have these discrete audiences, and if you want to cross-mingle them, you can. But uh, I think for a lot of players, they just like to play against other people that are on their same platform. So I, I think it's just giving the choice back to people that love the game, and, and where they want to play it is really up to them. Well, for CNBC, we got Tyler Blevins, also known as Ninja, the top Fortnite player. He was on Squawk Alley with us talking about what exactly makes this game so hot. Take a listen. I think that I offer a combination of, of high gameplay, like high tier gameplay uh, that they really can't get uh, with a lot of other content creators. It's very difficult to be like one of the best at a, at a video game in any game or at anything at all in the world. Uh, and I also think I offer, um, I mean, I'm very goofy. If you've ever watched any of my streams or my YouTube videos, uh, I, I do impressions and, and, and like stuff like that all the time and just crazy shenanigans. And uh, I think that the, the combination of that, it's like a hybrid. Uh, and it's just really fun to watch and uh, a pretty positive environment as well. Okay, okay. Actually, he was talking about what makes him so hot. Uh, he is the uh, owner of the number one channel on Twitch right now. He's making a reported half a million dollars a month from multiple channels, but mostly off of Twitch, thanks to this kind of interaction between uh, Epic Games, the maker of Fortnite, and Twitch, and then Amazon Prime is tied into Twitch Prime because Amazon owns Twitch, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, once again, this is Fort Knox Live. We are talking future of gaming. We want to bring in Raul Sood from Las Vegas, uh, the founder and CEO of Unicorn, joins us. And uh, you know a little something about making money in the gaming ecosystem, Raul. You're trying to do it in a pretty creative way with esports betting. Um, how soon before you can make a market around Fortnite? 
Uh, pretty, pr it's it's an interesting game because it is a um, it is a game. It's like a battle royale with uh, you know the, the first person uh, or the, sorry the, the last man standing wins essentially. Um, but we're actually running Fortnite tournaments at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas starting at the end of this month. Uh, on, a, on a weekly basis, so they're sort of buy-in tournaments. People come in, they can compete in Fortnite, um, and uh, it, it should be interesting. I, I think I think it's uh, if you think of the space that we're creating at the MGM, it's sort of like a high-end card room, you could say. But instead of playing cards <laughs> yeah. or, or poker, you're you're coming in and you're you're playing Fortnite. So is this um, World Series of Fortnite? I mean, is it going to be kind of like <laughs> World Series of Poker? And what what kind of prize money is there going to be for the last player standing? Well, it's um, it's uh, you know, we have to we have to start small. So you know we're, we're talking like hundreds of dollars in 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 a round kind of thing. It's not going to be you know getting rich. It's it's more about just having fun and more than anything else, um, changing the landscape of the of the casino. I, I think over time you'll you'll find that uh, you know slot machines are becoming less relevant and 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 gamers are are much more interested in playing games of skill, uh, especially games that they're comfortable with. Um, sorry, you know, the, the, uh, sorry, sorry, this is Russ. I, I just had a quick question about you know these sorts of games and esports, and obviously, I think the idea it, it's a perfect fit, fit for casinos because in a lot of ways, you know, uh, it's very easy to understand the you know earn rates for a casino. But from an esports perspective, do you guys see this ever taking off in the way that like World Series of Poker is taking off? Because these games are very difficult to balance the structure of the game. Yeah, they're they're difficult to balance, but you know, again, it's the same thing with uh, even even like League of Legends is hard. It's it's hard to create odds on because every couple of weeks there's a new champion or, or new changes to the game. You just have to be really good at this, and and you know, this is what we do. The thing that makes the esport is the viewership. So if there's viewers watching the game, uh, then you know, ultimately there's there's uh, there's an opportunity to turn it into an esport. Um, at the moment, I would say PUBG and and uh, and um, uh, sorry, um, Fortnite. I, I don't know where my, my head is at. Uh, Fortnite, P PUBG and Fortnite are sort of in a stage where they're generating a lot of fans. Uh, they they have a lot of players. They have a lot of viewers. But it's it's kind of hard to picture the esport around it because it's a single player uh, type situation. So um, so for now, what's happening is teams, esport teams, are going to sign up streamers who are very popular on these games so that they can create more sponsorship opportunities and things like that. Um, but over time, we'll find ways to put markets on it. So yeah, we're, we're pretty optimistic about this game. And also, you I know, the other thing that's really cool. Oh, oh, go sorry, ahead. I was just going to say the other thing that's really cool about this, John, you touched on it earlier, you know, with, with mobile. Um, you know, the, what they've done with this game is they've essentially got the hardcore gamers playing the game on their desktop PCs, and now they've given them the option to play on mobile. It's, it's a lot different from going mobile first. Um, so, you know, my kids play this game religiously, and, and they just play mobile when they're sitting in the car, uh, but, you know, they, they really thrive on the desktop. But the fact that they have it with them and they can carry it with them keeps them engaged on the game, and it keeps them wanting to buy more, buy, buy more stuff. Um, it's a brilliant strategy. Now I want to virtually reach out to San Francisco, pull in Lewis Ward. He is IDC Research Director covering gaming, augmented reality, virtual reality, etc. He's at the Game Developer Conference there. Uh, Lewis, what is the impact, you think, of uh, not only viral games like Fortnite, but platforms like Twitch for streaming and even, uh, you know, esports betting platforms like Unicorn on the future of gaming. I mean, these, these are business models we haven't seen before, right? Right, it really is an interesting uh, mix of kind of new entertainment technologies come together with video games, right? So a traditional market, or at least one that's been around and known for many, many decades, is taking on a new aspect, which is the viewership angle, which I don't think many people anticipated would be a huge part of the market so quickly. And therefore, there are companies like Twitch, like Unicorn and others that are coming on board and saying, okay, this is a real thing. We can start to make money, not only on the game itself, but on those who want to watch the game or bet on very good players of those games. So a uh, really dynamic part of the market, obviously, today, and something that we're seeing uh, here at the show play out a little bit. Well, this is Fort Knox Live. From CNBC, I am John Ford here at the New York Stock Exchange. We're talking the future of gaming and, frankly, the money behind it. It's looking very different from just the plain old console and PC days. So many more plays 
uh, that you can do in it. Uh, we talked at CNBC to Tyler Blevins, also known as Ninja, the top Fortnite player, top Twitch streamer around these days. We also talked to him about the business of Ninja, where the money is coming from. Here's what he said. A lot of the income is definitely coming from the Amazon and like Twitch Prime subscribers. Uh, we also just hit 5 million subscribers on YouTube as well. And uh, Instagram just hit over a million followers and I'm almost there on Twitter. And just the, the combination of all of those things is really where the, I mean, just the collective revenue is, is coming from. And uh, I mean, this deal that Amazon Prime and Twitch Prime have together is incredible. Uh, Twitch Prime allows people to like claim loot and collect loot uh, with specific games, and they recently did a deal with Fortnite, which is the hottest game right now, and that actually is, is one of the main reasons of influx uh, of subscribers currently to my stream. Russ, um, co-founder of Polygon, you guys cover this space backwards and forwards. My question to you is, is Apple about to get steamrolled. For, for years, there were rumors about Apple coming out with a gaming console. They never really did that, but they did come up with iOS. Games have driven the App Store for them so much, but Amazon bought Twitch, and Twitch is really center stage when it comes to Fortnite and when it comes to so many of these streaming trends now. Is it game over for Apple unless they do something major? Well, I think for Apple, they kind of win no matter what in this case. Uh, you know, Fortnite, we're not talking about Twitch's uh, revenue model, but Fortnite's revenue model, which is made by Epic Games, is all about microtransactions. And if people are playing on right. a mobile device, like an Apple device, and buying digital goods on an Apple device, Apple is getting a percentage of that income. So they're still winning. I don't think Apple uh, has ever really needed to release their own gaming console. They've had one. It's, it's called an iPhone. Um, and, you know, if popular games like Fortnite come to the iPhone, they win no matter what. It doesn't really matter. But what, that, that's one probably important and, well, definitely important and, and definitely profitable end uh, of this pie that's getting sliced. But who knows how big just viewership will become, uh, Lewis, and, and, and then the advertising revenue attached to that. I'm not sure Apple's going to get its share of that part of the pie. What do you think? In terms of the uh, the live streaming aspect to it, um, you know, I guess the, the the content can run on basically any platform. There's obviously a Twitch application on iOS and Android and on PCs and whatnot. So in that sense, if the you know the if the ad is served up uh, through Apple's iOS platform, yes, they get their share of the ad revenue stream. But a lot of the money associated with this is premium subscriptions for the YouTube, you know, or the uh, you know the Twitch gamers that have a subscription service, and also right. of course sponsorships. So there there are multiple aspects to how you monetize this revenue stream, and you know video ads inserted into the stream is only one part of it. Raul, tell me more about this space that Unicorn is building out at the MGM. I mean, uh, uh, paint, a, paint a visual picture for us, a mental picture, I don't know, if, if you can, uh, screen sizes, the amount of space, what you expect to happen there, what role uh, live viewers are gonna play? Well, look, you know, I, I'll just say this, that um, the, what, what the MGM is doing is, is they're really putting a, a, a front foot forward on, uh, on the future of eSports. In fact, there's a huge uh, 30,000 square foot eSports arena coming up at the Luxor, which is opening up this weekend, uh, which will be super interesting. It's like a nightclub uh, with all eSports. It's going to be the place where, you know, where all the hardcore players go. What we're doing at the MGM Grand is at the Level Up Bar, we're setting up a, uh, every week we run tournaments, just basically tournaments powered by Unicorn. Uh, this weekend we're doing Hearthstone, you know, we sometimes do fighting tournaments. Uh, we, we do different games every weekend. And, and, and really the idea is that um, the casinos are having a harder time bringing young people to their, uh, to their casino floors because what happens is Las Vegas is, uh, is getting more traffic than it's ever gotten in the history of Las Vegas. There's more people visiting Las Vegas than have ever visited Las Vegas before, uh, year over year. The thing is though, the gambling revenues are going down. And that's mostly, like if you look at the slot machine area, that's mostly due to the fact that the slots are their, their highest revenue generating area, uh, typically in the casino floor. But if you walk through the slot machine area, 
Uh, there's more walkers and wheelchairs uh, per square foot than, <laughs> than anywhere else in the casino. And, and yeah. no matter what they do, you know, they, they, they try and retheme them. They try and make them exciting by bringing in Britney Spears or Pitbull and retheming them. But they're still really only 100 year olds that are using those slot machines. And, um, you know, the young people really just want to do what they like to do, which is either go back to their hotel and play games or, or find a place that makes them comfortable. And I think that's where the future of entertainment is going to come in. I also, uh, to your point about Apple, um, look, I think you're absolutely right. I think Apple is kind of missing out on the, the, the content distribution part, uh, you know, at least from a viewership standpoint. The, the, the key in this space with video games now, publishers care more about viewers, uh, more, more than anything about viewers and players, because viewers equals players. So, so Twitch is just a massive asset for Amazon. Where Apple is getting it right is they recently did an acquisition uh, on an AR VR company. Um, they're, they're, they're really pushing forward in the AR VR space. And I think what you'll see, the future of entertainment looks like this. You'll walk into a warehouse, you'll strap on a vest with haptic feedback, you'll have a headband with sensors on it, you'll, wear, uh, uh, you'll, you'll carry around a weapon that's fake, it's like articulating feedback, and you'll wear um, AR glasses. And you'll run around a virtual map playing uh, Fortnite with your friends. Uh, you know, like a physical kind of virtual uh, type thing meeting together. And that to me is the future of entertainment in this space. And I think it's coming and all the pieces are there. It just has to be, somebody has to put it together really well. And then on so, top yeah. of that, you'll have a betting component to it. So, so the, we want to power tag on steroids, right? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, that, that, that business sounds, uh, so there have been obviously a few competitors in that space, very narrow space for making these event type spaces for gaming. Uh, where indeed you strap on a backpack, you hold a fake gun, and you run around an arena. From a scalability standpoint, do you really see like being able to pump in enough players into that space to make money without it costing like an arm and a leg? No, absolutely not. I think I think what happens is there's the viewership part to it, which is the key part to it. They stream it online, and there's people watching okay. it online. So. You know, you're absolutely right. You're not going to be able to scale this. It's not a big scalable thing, but but the viewing, the viewership is where it gets really interesting, and that's where we come in because we then take that viewership and we monetize it through you know through legal regulated betting in in, in markets around the world, and and you know we we know or we're very confident that the U.S. is going to uh, legalize sports betting here in the near future, and we're going to be the front end of it when it comes to esports. Unicorn is going to be first. We're going to make sure that we bring in all the best betting markets, and um, this is part of it. This is kind of yeah, part what of was that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, yeah, Run Running Man? That was basically <laughs> yeah. Fortnite <laughs> in yeah, that model that you described. Except, I mean, it's, it's pretty much that. I, I would watch that. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I can see it working. <laughs> Russ, I want, Russ, I want to go back to this idea that uh, real, you know, real life or death. perhaps it's a strong man. Yeah. I, I, I put it out there about Apple and the platform battle that's shaping up. And yes, they are getting their share on the microtransactions, but this question on whether they have to do more reaching the broader audience and, and viewers and, and, and whether they might be missing out there. I mean, Google Alphabet has YouTube. Um, you know, Amazon now has Twitch. Apple has Apple TV, but no particular app on that that they own for viewership of games. I mean, they, they tried some of this stuff with Game Center. It really didn't work for whatever reason. Your take, Russ, on, I don't know, why Game Center's uh, features uh, for this kind of thing didn't work and, and whether Apple should take another stab at it. Yeah, um, Apple's just never, you're right, Apple's never really gotten to the space of creating their own content in the way that Twitch does or YouTube does. They, um, and ideally they'd want people to come in and make the content for them. They've just never tried it. They've never attempted it. Uh, and with Game Center, really all Game Center was was friends lists and, and very basic stuff. And I think they felt like it was just added cruft that didn't really help them and their business. The only thing that they've tried to do, which is kind of in this space, and they haven't been very vocal of how successful it's been, is that they rebranded the App Store. So the App Store now has like content, which is to say like uh, articles, feature articles about the games that they're putting out there. But they haven't, for example, hosted tournaments or had live streams where they're really putting personalities forward, which I agree with you, is the future. People like Ninja, that is a very rare skill. Like imagine hosting a show, John, and while you're hosting the show, you also <laughs> need to be doing really well at a game. 
I can't physically do it. I've really tried. <laughs> and uh, it, it's a rare skill. So those personalities are the sorts of people that content creators want to be talking, content hosters, I should say, want to be talking to, Apple or Amazon or what have you, because th they are the new stars. They are the new you know, Tom Cruise of this day. Lewis, jump in here. By the way, uh, yeah, I don't think Apple's, yeah, I was just going to say, I don't think Apple's really strongly focused on uh, all the community stuff, right? You're absolutely right that it's very much yep. underdeveloped. I just think they're, you know, the iOS app store is just doing so well financially that I don't think they see a huge impetus to then uh, repurpose a significant portion of that revenue and then, you know, go after Twitch or whatever it is. I, I don't see much inclination on their part to really do that. I think they're probably at this stage at least fairly happy letting those other companies take the lead and perhaps sometime they will, but I don't, I don't sense an urgency there. And Lewis, when they have focused on it, anything social, it's been bad. I mean, remember Ping? I mean. Terrible. <laughs> that, that, terrible. Uh, the, 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 even the, future, the features that they tried to put into Apple Music around artists having pages, I mean, I don't know. I'm not the biggest music guy, but I don't get the sense, I don't hear about people really engaging on that social platform, even though it's purpose built, even though Apple is the place to go when it comes to music, they just, they can monetize, but they seem to have trouble socializing. I mean, Lewis, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong, and, and uh, probably goes all the way back to Steve Jobs, who just, ne even though he believed he worked at Atari very early on in his career, after that point, he kind of expressed very little interest in focusing on video games in and of themselves. And I don't think you can be a successful platform in this space moving forward, as the other guests could probably attest to, uh, unless you have a team that's really excited about what's going on and is thinking two or three steps ahead of what's coming. And quite frankly, at this point, I think Apple's in a more reactive state vis-a-vis -vis gaming in and of itself and where eSports is going. Yeah, I mean, I, I carry two devices. I carry a, an Android device and an, and, a, and an iPhone. And a PUBG is available on my, on my Android, but it's not available on the iPhone. It's um, on iPhone you now. Know, it, it, it just oh, it is now? Okay. Yeah, it just came <laughs> out. All right, well, that's good. That's good to know. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, on, on that point, I was, I was just saying that, um, you know, I think it comes from Al Apple's culture. You're exactly right. I, I, think, uh, I, I think, you know, Lewis, when you touch on the culture of Apple and Steve Jobs, I think it's about not wanting to partner maybe, or, you know, in the past it was, we'll, we'll build it ourselves in our, old wall, in our own walled garden. And I think now they need to find ways to collaborate. They need to find ways to open up. They should probably buy Netflix, you know, just as a start, even though it's not quite related, but it kind of is because they create their own content. But they should start thinking about ways to do this because Amazon is way ahead of everybody else right now. They're, they're really thinking far ahead, who to buy, how to use their money properly, things like that. And they're just, they're just killing it. Russ, uh, Tyler, I would agree. Ninja, was fascinating when it comes to uh, building this business around himself as a gamer and I mean it used to be almost taken for granted ah well you're not going to make a living playing video games how many times do we hear that from our parents growing up but now I mean it's a brave new world there are people who are making a living better yep. living than I am playing video games so Russ what have you noticed I mean you, your publication Polygon follows this space and these guys what is it that makes a top level athlete at this sort of uh, sport um, from the showmanship and the marketing of themselves to actual, I don't know, eye-hand coordination? Yeah, uh, that's, uh, you talk about showmanship and that's a big thing. You look at a, a basketball player like Dirk Nowitzki, who is like n a, a, an extremely good basketball player, but has no real showmanship whatsoever. He just does his thing and he does it really well, but he's not like a splashy guy. And with gaming, you need to be. Uh, people will not watch you if you just do your thing and do really well at the game, and that's it. Um, so it really is these two skill sets which makes it so difficult to uh, really set yourself apart, which is why people like Ninja are, are a rarity. And it's a real challenge not only for them to put themselves out there, but also, so he's, Ninja's obviously very, very good at Fortnite. If six months from now, Fortnite's not really where it was in terms of popularity, the, he needs to move to another game, otherwise he's toast. And that shift, you lose audience, you lose interest, um, so he constantly needs to reinvent, reinvent himself. And it's, it's a real challenge. It's a it's pretty, it's pretty tough gig. <laughs> well, I, I think that the number of people making a living at eSports is smaller than some, some folks might imagine looking at the size of the audience. If we did a floor of maybe $50,000 a year or something generated, 
you know, it's a tiny fraction of all gamers that make that cut. So it does happen, but it's, I think it's rarer than many people kind of think out of, you know, at their first blush. Yes. Raul, give us a ballpark. Uh, how many people do you think are making 50 Gs or more playing games? Oh man, uh, I mean, there's you know, there's hundreds of teams uh, across multiple titles. Um, you know, each team has six players. Let's say the NBA is coming in. The uh, you know, with with their league, I don't know if you've heard, but you know, the NBA oh, yeah. is now. They're about to do a combine. Uh, they have you know, they they're hiring players. The players make around I think sixty thousand, but then they get sponsorships and bonuses and things like that. But it, it's definitely not in the you know the tens of thousands, but it's almost like saying, you know, how, how many basketball players make, you know, uh, X amount of money? Uh, you know, there's only so many really great basketball players out there. This is a space that's sort of forming and, uh, and, and growing. This is a space that well, will continue to grow. Well, that's what I was going to ask, Raul. That's what I was yeah. going to ask is, uh, which, which is longer odds, being a professional athlete in the NFL or the NBA or being a professional esports athlete. I mean, granted, well, you'll, you'll well, get let a me put it this way. money physically playing, you know, in the real world, but let me put it this way. Uh, it depends on the sport. So, for example, the, 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 the median age of a, of a PGA Tour fan is 70 years old. The median age of a Major League Baseball fan is 55 years old. So, you know, so you, you've got to, and uh, basketball probably skews younger, and so does Major League Soccer. Football skews a little bit higher, but essentially every day a Major League Baseball fan uh, dies and a, and a PGA Tour fan dies, and four eSports fans are born. Um, <laughs> my point is that th this is a growing segment, and it's growing in multiple, it's growing in both directions, meaning I'm in my uh, early 40s, I'm an anomaly because I play two to three games a day, but in five years or 10 years, there's gonna be lots of people in their 40s that grew up playing video games and will continue to play and continue to watch. Uh, go I mean, I was watching Ninja the other, night for three hours uh, with him streaming with Drake you know that's weird but you know my kids are watching it I'm watching it we're really into it and and we really like that and I remember the next day somebody on Twitter said something like um, who would watch someone else play like waste time watching someone else play video games online and there was a really good response and the response was the same people who would waste their time watching a sport like you know baseball on TV I mean it's 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 changing and whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter because every, you know, the young people did like these it people, and it is growing and that's it. These people who say that about video games, did they never have friends over uh, <laughs> with a console that was only two player? I mean, you got, you got four or five kids, you got two players on the console, more than half of the people are watching. We all remember, you know, and be doing play by play commentary. Ooh, you got kids, yeah. oh man. You yeah. know, so I mean, isn't this just an extension of that when it's all said and done, maybe, with better sideline commentary and definitely with better graphics. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the one thing I'll say is And a little that, more money. Um, it, it, yeah. <laughs> in, in, in our space, as we, see, as we see betting markets grow and the, and, the, and the demand for betting on this space, legal betting, which means 18 to 34 years old in certain markets, as it grows and the handle grows, we know that this industry is just getting bigger. So, and it is going to get huge, like 2020, uh, you know, it's going to be much bigger than what it is today, at least in our space. It's going to be over a $20 billion business. Um, pretty incredible. So so we're, we're big believers in this space and, um, and we think it's here to stay. So to your question earlier, are traditional sports going to become less relevant? Absolutely. I think F1 racing is going to die. I think PGA Tour will definitely die because the fans are getting older. And I think Major League Baseball is just kind of getting boring. Um, Basketball, on the other hand, is, is you know, they're, they're, they skew younger, as I said. They're building an eSports league for a reason, because they're trying to get young people engaged, trying to get them interested in the sport, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. They, they have a three-year bet on it. Uh, you know, the Kings are doing something really cool with their stadium. They have a state-of-the-art stadium. Um, they have, a, uh, like, a training room. I mean, it's pretty incredible. If you ever get a chance to go to a basketball uh, arena that has an eSports team, you should ask to do a tour of what they're doing. It's pretty incredible. I am looking forward to the the first multi-million dollar <laughs> brand contract for you know a major esports athlete like you know the Air Jordan uh, uh, Nike equivalent for esports. There is that already, John. There is that already. Like big, big, big one. I, I mean, so big <laughs> that we maybe hundred million dollars. I mean, you know. Okay. Like yeah. They, sure. They, they sure. got their own controller or whatever the sure. whatever the equivalent is going to be to the Air Jordans. Um, I believe it's coming in the next five years. I, I would uh, just just add that um, 
I was just going to throw out there that in our in our research, it's pretty clear that that uh, mobile games, pure play mobile games, a la Arena, Valor, and so forth, uh, are just they're going to become major esports as well. So we're talking about PC and console today, but I firmly believe over the next few years we will see multi-million dollar esports events and tournaments coming to mobile devices. And I didn't even mention it meant to Amazon Game On, which they also announced this week, going toward exactly that. Uh, mobile games, um, you know, non-professional amateur players being able to compete against one another, maybe win prizes, probably most of them Amazon hardware, Amazon Echoes, whatnot. Guys, it's been a great discussion. Uh, it's been a half an hour, that zipped by. That was like, it's like time zips by when I'm playing Minecraft at home after the kids are down. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate it. That's the good um, thing about covering enjoyed. games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Russ Frushnik from a Polygon, um, and of course Raul Sood from Unicorn, and Lewis yeah. Ward joining us from San Francisco from IDC at the Game Developer Conference. This has been Fort Knox Live. Great. Thanks to all of you for being with us. See you next Great. time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.